of the, the grade eight, grade nine, grade 10, this is at grade 11 where it starts to experience speckle geometry to go to grade 12. Now, when you look at speckle geometry, it's all about theorems, it's about understanding the certain theorems that you need to know. It is advisable that when you put your theorems, you group them in, 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 a, in a similar way, in a way as the ones to be when we understand. For example, if I talk about this theorem, this one, uh, This is the center of a circle. Ah. And I will also talk about this other theorem at the same time. Because the other one is the inverse of the other one. All right, let's look at these two theorems. In the first one, we've got a line that is drawn from the center of a circle to the midpoint. This simply means that this side is the same as this side. So we've got a line that is drawn from the center of a circle to the midpoint of a cut. What does that line do? A line that is drawn from the center of a circle to the midpoint of a cut, it is perpendicular to a cut. So you prove that this is 90 degrees or this is 90 degrees. A line drawn from the center of a circle to the midpoint of a cut is perpendicular to a cut. It is important that Farsi has the as I'm speaking here. A line drawn from the center of a circle to the midpoint of a chord is perpendicular to a chord. So it must see prove the Is this line really perpendicular to a chord? Number two, a line drawn from the center of a circle perpendicular to a chord bisects the chord. In this case now, we are given that this is 90 degrees. So we are proving whether this side is the same as this side. Let's do this again. A line drawn from the center of a chord, from the center of a circle, Perpendicular to a chord bisects the chord. We are proving whether this line A is perpendicular. If you want to run into two equal halves, that is what we are proving in this theorem. Now, a proof of this theorem is required for exam purposes as well. The next three theorems I would like to group them together as well. It is this theorem that talks about this one, uh, number three. If this is the center. This also becomes another important theorem that I want us to, to talk about. This next one will be this one, number four. It's the theorem talks about, uh, all that I'm putting them here are theorems that deal with the center. If this is the diameter, it means that this is the center. It does something there, it forms 90 degrees there. Number five, another theorem that will talk about the center Ah, it's this theorem. Angles in the same segment. All right, let me talk about these three theorems. The number three, theorem number three, we call it the center theorem. It is an angle subtended by an arc or chord at the center is twice as the angle subtended by the same arc or chord at the circumference. It is important that you should take notes of the parts of the circle because it makes our lives easier. The distance around the circle will refer to it as the circumference. That is the circumference. This is the center of a circle. This is called a radius. The distance from the center of a circle to the circumference will refer to it as the radius. What is the name of this line? It passes through the center. It's called a diameter. It's a diameter. Uh, what is the name of this part here? This part that is formed up by this radius and this radius, by those radii. This sec part here is called a sector. It's called a sector. This is called an arc. This is called an arc. This is called an arc. This will be a minor arc. This other one will be a major arc, a bigger arc. Then there's something called a chord. This line is called a chord. A chord divides our circle into two parts, into a smaller part and a bigger side part. So this part is called a minor segment. This part will be a major segment. It is separated by that chord. So it is important that we should know the parts of the circle. 
There are words that we use a lot in our Euclidean geometry, words like subtense. Subtense means to form. If you look at this arc, it forms this angle at the center. This arc subtends a particular angle there at the center. If you look at what we have here, so this arc here, this arc, this arc, if this is A, this is B, in this case, arc AB subtends angle X at the center, or if I call this angle X, subtends this angle at the center, the same arc subtends the same angle at the circumference. So this theorem is called the center theorem. Whenever we have a situation like that, you should always know that the angle at the center will be two times bigger than the angle formed by the same arc as the circumference. This arc is going to the center, the same arc is going to the circumference. Now for this to be true, the other, angle, the other one must be at the center, the other one must be at the circumference. Remember, they must be subtended by the same arc in this particular case. So it is important to note that you can't have a situation like this where this one is at the center and you think that these two will be the same. They are not the same, simply because this one is not at the circumference. One must be at the center, the other one must be at the, center, at the circumference for this theorem to hold. So it is important to note that. We call this a center theorem. So in other words, if I've got 100 degrees here as the angle, what will be the angle there? It will be half of that, which is 50 degrees. Remember, this one at the center is always bigger. Don't confuse it. The angle at the center is twice as the angle at the circumference. Look at this other theorem. This theorem says the angle is subtended by a diameter. There is a diameter here. It forms a particular angle. It subtends a particular angle. The angle that is formed by a diameter will always be equal to 90 degrees. It is important to note that the angle subtended by the diameter is equal to 90 degrees. So this line will be perpendicular to this one. They form 90 degrees. This must be a diameter. It should come through a center. Right. <coughs> we call this angles in the, semi, in, in the semicircle, angles formed by the semicircle. Look at this other one. Look at this arc here. If you look at this arc, if you look at this arc here, look at this arc, look at this arc, it goes to the, uh, to the circumference. The same arc goes to the circumference. Therefore, these two angles are the same. They are subtended by the same arc or chord. So these are angles in the same segment. They are in the, in the same segment. If there was a chord here, there was going to be a major segment and a minor segment. Both those angles are in the same segment, in the major segment. So we call these two angles the same. They are the same. They are angles in the same segment or they are angles subtended by the same arc or chord. So these two will be equal. Likewise, if I'm coming from this side, it will come down here. The same arc can also go there. Simply means that this angle is also equal to that angle. Right. We call this angles in the same segment or angles, sub uh, angles subtended by the same arc or chord. They are the same. Right. If you notice here, most of these angles they deal with, this theorem deals with the center. Right, let's move on to those uh, theorems that deal with the tangent. Number six, <coughs> if I've got this angle, this is what we call a tangent. This is what we call a chord. Remember, a tangent is a line that touches any figure at one point. This is what we call a tangent. But what do you call a line that passes in this way? That other line is called a second. This is a tangent, tangent, that is a second, second, <coughs> right. Whenever I, I look at my, my, this is my tangent, this is my chord. There's an angle that is between a tangent and a chord. That angle that I want to talk about, the angle that is between a tangent and a chord. It is important to know that it will be equal to the angle in the alternate segment. So this angle will always be equal to that angle there. The theorem says the angle between a tangent and a chord is equal to the angle in the other segment, in the alternate segment. So it is important that you should always look at such things to see that the angle between the tangent and the chord is equal to the angle in the other segment. Remember this section that I'm going to push in here, they deal with tangent. They deal with mainly with tangent. The angle between a tangent and a chord is equal to the angle in the alternate segment. Number six. Whenever we've got this angle, this circle, and we've got this line here, what is the name of this line? It is a tangent. 
This is the center of a circle, and I'm drawing a line down into the circumference. What is the name of this line? It is called a radius. It is a line from the center of a circle to the circumference. We refer to this as a radius. Ah, it's something that is happening here. A radius meets a tangent. Whenever a radius meets a tangent, no matter where it is, as long as the other one is a radius, the other one is a tangent, you will always have 90 degrees. It is important to note that if this is my circle, this is my radius, and this is a tangent, ah, you will always have 90 degrees there. It will, no matter where it comes from, it can come from this position. As long as there's a radius going there, you will always have 90 degrees. If this is 90 degrees, on, on the other side, it's also it's 90 degrees. You can write 90 degrees this side or this side, because together, this is a straight line, it is 180. So if this is 90, obviously the other one will be 90. It can also come from this position. If there is a tangent there, you must know that this is 90 degrees. So it's important to note those. It doesn't matter where it comes from. As long as there's a tangent meeting a radius, or even a diameter for that, for that matter, even a diameter for that matter, this is a, because there's a radius there. You should not be confused when you see the diameter. Number, this is number seven. Number eight, theorem is eight in Fuller's Kuhlman guy. Remember, all the theorems that I'm putting in here, they deal with a tangent. All the ones that are here, they deal with a circle. This one is called the Tancourt theorem. The angle between a tangent and a chord is equal to an angle subtended by that chord at the circumference. The other angle must be between the tangent and the chord. The other one must be at the circumference, subtended by that chord. This one says time radius theorem. Whenever we've got a tangent and you meet a near radius, we'll always have 90 degrees, no matter where it is. As long as that situation is happening, we'll always have 90 degrees. Another theorem that deals with a tangent is this theorem. Whenever we've got this is a tangent, here's another tangent from the same point. Now, this theorem says that if we've got these two tangents that are coming from the same point, this tangent and this tangent are coming from the same point, they will always be equal at the point of contact with the circle, not beyond, but at the point of contact with the circle. So these are the two tangent theorem. Whenever we've got two tangents that are coming from the same point, those two tangents will always be equal. Right, this is the theorems that deals with the tangent. After these theorems that deals with the tangent, I want us to go to the next uh, type of theorem, which deals with a uh, Cyclic quadrilaterals. <clears throat> it is important to note that if I've got uh, this circle and I'm sketching a quadrilateral inside the circle, it is important to walk in a corner a figure a quadrilateral for this to work. It is important then to know to put their angle area plus the angle will always be equal to 180 degrees. What is this saying to us? The opposite angles of a cyclic quad are supplementary. So these are not necessarily equal, but if I add them together, they will give me 180 degrees. They are not equal necessarily, but if I add them together, they will give me 180 degrees. Not only this, even if I add this one and that one, as long as they are opposite angles of a cyclic quad, they will always give me 180 degrees. So this theorem says, the sum of the opposite angles of a triangle is equal to 180 degrees. Another important one is this next one. If I've got a, a cyclic quadrilateral, like this one, it's a cyclic quadrilateral. Remember, all corners must be at the circle. When I look at this one, you see the angle to the exterior angle. This is the exterior angle. This angle is outside. The, 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 the quads. The exterior angle will always be equal to the interior opposite angle. So in other words, this angle is always equal to this angle. But these two are the same. So these are the two theorems that deal with the cyclic quad. So what is this saying to us? It is important to note that if you've got a figure like this, and whenever I add this angle, plus that angle gives me 180 degrees. It will mean that I can draw a circle around this one. It will mean that it, this is concyclic, it is concyclic. Same thing applies to this one. Whenever I've got a figure like this one, and when I check this angle that is here, it is the same as the angle that is there, 
Therefore, this is concisus. It is important to be able to conclude in that particular way. Right. These are the 10 uh, theorems that generally deals with uh, the, the circle geometry. After this, I want us to look at the other three theorems that deals with uh, uh, the angles, the, the triangles. It can be the parallel, the, 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 the similar triangles, or the proportionality theorems. I want us to move to those theorems now. Thank you. Thank you.